Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Hiding in plain sight in the rocky landscape of the Makran coastline of southern Balochistan in Pakistan is an architectural anomaly that seems to have gone unnoticed and unexplored for centuries. Known as the Balochistan Sphinx, the site in question first came into the public eye in 2004 after the Makran Coastal Highway was opened. Most people pass it off as a natural geological formation, but as far as I am aware, no archaeological work has been conducted on the site. I can understand the geological interpretation, but some researchers have taken a closer look at the Balochistan Sphinx, and are convinced it is a gigantic, ancient, rock-cut architectural complex. Researcher Bibu Dev Misra believes that what we are looking at is in fact a badly worn Egyptian-like sphinx. He believes he has identified a jawline, discernible facial features and even a headdress that closely resembles the Nemes of the Egyptian pharaohs. Furthermore, Misra points out that you can easily make out the reclining forelegs of the Balochistan sphinx, which terminate in well-defined paws. But the argument for this being a man-made structure isn't just the close resemblance to the Egyptian Sphinx. There is in fact a far bigger picture and the morphology of the surrounding hillside reveals a larger complex. From a distance we see what looks like a South Indian Hindu temple with a mandapa or entrance hall and a vimana or temple spire. The Sphinx is located in front of the temple and Misra interprets this as being the protector of the temple site. Sphinxes, as we know, can be found next to sacred monuments, temples and tombs, and although it is debated, many interpret the purpose of the Great Sphinx of Egypt to be the guardian of the Giza pyramids. Also, the fantastic statue of the Sphinx of Naxos is also believed to have acted as a protector. Sphinxes also appear in Indian art, and are known as Purusha Mariga, or Man Beast, and are often seen at temple gateways, acting as guardians or protectors of a sanctuary. Furthermore, sphinxes feature in Buddhist architecture in Southeast Asia. They are known as Manusiha, meaning man-lion, and are depicted in a cat-like crouching posture wearing a tapering crown and ornamental ear flaps, with feathered wings attached to their front limbs. The point to make here is that sphinxes are found throughout the world and often acted as protectors of sacred places. Therefore, a sphinx in Pakistan isn't as far-fetched an idea as you may have originally thought, especially as it is located next to what has been interpreted as a possible temple site. Misra has looked into the area with greater detail and he believes there is clear evidence of pillars carved into the boundary wall and he has even located the temple entrance behind a large pileup of sediment. To the left of the entrance, he has identified an elevated sculpted subsidiary shrine. To Misra, all of this information, when viewed together, points to the structure being man-made, a rock-cut monument with a level of erosion showing that it must be of great antiquity. After analysing the structure of the Sphinx Temple, Misra believes that it may actually be a Gopuram, which is the entrance tower of a temple. Gopurams have flat tops and rows of what look like ornamental pots arranged on top, both of which are identifiable at the Balochistan Sphinx complex, the latter having a covering of sediment. The Sphinx Temple appears to be contiguous with the outer boundary wall, which is what you would expect with a Gopuram, but you would also expect to see sculpted figures. According to Misra, we do, but granted they are badly eroded. He believes there are two monumental figures carved on the facade, just above the entrance. The elevated platform on which the Sphinx and the associated temple sit on is also believed to be elaborately carved, with pillars, niches and a symmetrical pattern that extends across the entire upper part of the platform. Some of the niches could be potential doors into the temple, 
In the same way, there are chambers beneath the great sphinx of Egypt. If you are still unconvinced by the site, Misra believes he has found a series of steps that lead up to the elevated platform, which gives the site the impression of a grand, rock-cut architectural complex, which, granted, has been badly eroded by the elements and covered with sediment, hiding the possible ancient ruin in plain sight. As well as natural wind and water erosion over the years, we know that the area has been subjected to tsunamis and mud volcanoes, so it is hard to date the structure from studying the erosional patterns and sediment build-up alone, without having a clear geological history of the area. So do we have any idea? We know that the Indus Valley civilization extended along the Makran coast, meaning the Sphinx Temple complex could therefore have been built thousands of years ago during the Indus period, possibly around 3000 BC or earlier. Also, according to the accounts of Chinese Buddhist monk Haiyan Sang, the Makran coast was, even in the 7th century AD, dotted with hundreds of Buddhist monasteries and caves, as well as several hundred Hindu temples, including a richly sculpted temple of Lord Shiva. Where they are today, we don't know so they must have simply been eroded away by the elements, or covered in sediment. For whatever reason, possibly a large-scale cataclysm, Misra believes they were entirely forgotten, and then, over time, passed off as natural formations. It is important to note that this particular site also isn't in total isolation, as on top of another elevated platform are possible remains of another ancient Hindu-like temple. To truly get to the bottom of the mystery, the area does require archaeological excavation, as the site is still classified as a natural geological formation, and not a site of human interest. If excavations do confirm Misra's claims, then inscriptions and archaeological finds will certainly help to pinpoint the date of its creation. The site could be of extreme historical importance, as it could fill in the gaps of the historic Indian civilization, We know that exquisite rock-cut temples and monuments were built from the 3rd century BC onwards, but where the skills and techniques came from is unknown, as there doesn't seem to be a clear evolution of monument building in the region. The rock-cut monuments of the Makran coastline may provide the answer, and could well hold the keys to understanding the transition between the Indus period and the later day Indian civilization. The site could be a treasure trove of archaeological wonders waiting to be discovered, but sadly the monuments continue to languish in isolation. It is Misra's wish for international attention to be drawn to the Makran coast, to bring in teams of archaeologists and independent researchers from around the globe, to shine the spotlight on these monuments and help write a new chapter in the history of humanity. But are they actually amazing historic ruins or are they simply natural geological formations? Personally, I am undecided, but there is certainly a case for further investigation. Thank you for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.